I was not in the bathroom. <clears throat> Would you fucking eat this? Would you want to fucking eat that, Dan? In my mind, I'm thinking, I would love to eat that oyster. I haven't eaten anything since family meal, which is about eight hours ago. All I had was a tiny burnt piece of pizza. But I didn't say that, because I knew that would be very bad. So I said, no, chef. Sorry, chef. And I knew Rob didn't want to yell at me. He was a good guy, but he was also the sous chef. And chef was standing at the pass, and if he didn't yell at me, he'd get yelled at. This is my third time messing up on an oyster tonight. I was told if it happens one more time, I get the experience of an oyster thrown in my face. Welcome to New York. So in any Cape Cod bar or any backyard barbecue, the oysters that I were serving would be great. Everyone would love them. But this wasn't any backyard barbecue. This was the basement kitchen of Eric Repair's three-star Michelin restaurant, Le Bernardin. And I fucked up. There was a little piece of shell in that oyster. It was one of 24, but there was a little piece of shell. So I got yelled at. The shift was a long one, as all of them were. I'd do about 100 hours a week, six days a week. When I wasn't at the restaurant, I'd go home. The thing is, I wasn't really living in New York. I was living across the river in Hoboken. Beautiful Hoboken. And I was living with a buddy. I wasn't, like, I wasn't technically living with him. I was kind of crashing on his couch just for a little bit before, while I got, uh, kind of got on my feet. Well, not on his couch, like behind his couch on a blow-up air mattress. <laughs> and it wasn't just his place. It was his girlfriend's place, too. And it wasn't just a little while. This was probably about nine months, and they were getting a little tired of me. It was fine. I was never home. I was never home. So I go into the restaurant. And the abuse is one thing, but I'm there for the seafood, and the seafood is immaculate. Giant Australian spiny lobsters, the best tuna you'll ever see in your entire life, all flown in fresh daily. Absolutely incredible stuff, and that's why I'm there. So as part of that, I, I go in the morning, I go about four hours before my shift to the basement. This is a basement below the basement, so it's two floors down. Um, it's where all the fish comes in. And there's one fish cutter for the entire restaurant. Um, his name is Husto, and he cuts about 1,000 pounds of fish every day. Huge, beautiful stripers, small black bass, turbo, you name it. He cuts it all into pristine fillets. So I want to learn how to do this as well. So I show up early in the morning, and I work with Husto, breaking down these fish. He's fast. He is so fast. For every one fish I can get done, he can get down probably 15, and they all look better than mine. He turns 1,000 pounds of fish into fillets in the span of about two and a half hours. It's incredible. So I'm down there in the morning, and I'm always groggy in the morning because I'm not getting a lot of sleep on the air mattress. And Husto is fast for a couple of reasons. One is he's been doing this a really long time. But two, he takes shortcuts. So when you get a fish at the market, they usually scale it for you. They cut off the dorsal fins, and they give it to you that way, basically so you don't hurt yourself on the dorsal fins or have to eat scales. He takes shortcuts that are really smart. He only scales right in the areas that he needs to make incisions. If he's going to take the skin off, the scales don't matter. So he just does a little bit around, around the edge by the dorsal fin, gets his cut in, and then takes the, takes the skin off. So Husto throws me about a 40, 45 inch uh, striped bass to scale. And so I'm just to go right along the dorsal fin. And I'm wearing a big yellow rubber uh, apron, big yellow rubber gloves. And I'm going, and it's cold. It's cold in the basement. So I'm kind of just going down, trying to go as fast as I can, trying to impress him. I want him to think that I'm good at what I'm doing. Uh, and all of a sudden, I catch with my finger part of the dorsal fin on the striper. And so uh, the dorsal fin is laying down, and it stands right back up when you do that. So I caught my finger on it, and it hurt really, really bad for a second. And then it didn't hurt at all. And I was like, all right, well, I just I, I kind of knocked it on it, but that's fine. So I keep cutting. I finish up for the day with him, and I go upstairs to kind of clock in for my shift. And I'm sitting in the locker room, and I notice that my finger is getting kind of like, it's a little stingy, but it's not bad. So I go up and I do my shift. Rob has a field day with me that day. Um, I bleed my own blood onto like a big eight-inch bologna oyster. I knock into him when I'm going to the pass with this tuna dish. I go through about 15 pounds of crab, uh, fresh crab, and we do it under a black light, and the black light shows the shells so you can pick them out. And I miss a few shells. 
It's those fucking shells again that get me. <laughs> so I get to the end of my day, and I, and, and, I, and I clock out and I go home. It's probably about 1 in the morning. I get home, and my finger's really throbbing at this point. But I'm like, you know, I think, I think it'll be all right. Like, you know, I just stabbed it on it. So I go in the next day, and I walk into the restaurant. And Rob sees me kind of like getting ready at my station. And he's like, get that finger the fuck out of here. I'm like, thanks, Rob. So I leave, and I'm like, I got to go to a hospital. You know, I can check this out. So I look for the best hospital in the area, and Mount Sinai pops up on my phone. So I hop in a cab. 30 minutes later, I'm in this pristine white bed with real sheets on it. And, I, and I'm surrounded by a team of hand surgeons. I'll say that again, a team of hand surgeons. And they are doting over me. They are so nice. They tell me that it's a really good thing that I came in today. I'm like, that is so nice, that feels great. <laughs> the reason, they say, is that if I didn't, a little iffy on the finger. I'm like, you have a fever, you know that. I'm like, no, I don't know that. <laughs> they give me this lovely pain medicine, and they set up a, a, you know, a, a bed for me in the operating room, and they go in and they pull out about a half inch piece of dorsal fin, covered in all of the toxins that come on those fish, and all the bacteria. And my finger's about this, the color and shape of a kielbasa at this point. <laughs> they take it out, and I go back to my room, and I have these wonderful nurses taking care of me. And while I'm laying there, I'm thinking, you know, this is what it must be like to dine at La Bernadette. <laughs> to feel so welcome and so nice. <laughs> so for the next day and a half, I sit and I just enjoy it. Because after that, it's back to the basement. That's Dan Souza.